Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. In today's video, I want to talk about the upcoming Constantinople hard fork on Ethereum. I'm still getting a lot of questions from people about what they need to do, so I'm going to walk you through exactly what you need to know before this all happens on January 16th. Now, I tweeted out yesterday that there's a lot of confusion, but the important thing to recognize is that this is not contentious, the community is not divided, and exchanges are already announcing their support for this, and not really any other forks that look like they're going to spin off out of this, but I'm going to talk about a few that are floating around that might be scams that are promising, you know, airdrops or free coins, etc. So in the past, when you know two groups within a community can't agree, they can spin off and hard fork so there's a new coin created. And we saw that with Bitcoin Cash in 2017. Then again last year within the Bitcoin Cash community when they couldn't agree, and we saw ABC and Satoshi's vision spin out. We had miners that couldn't agree, you know advocates that couldn't agree and so on that creates a new coin now this is not the case for ethereum that's had these planned upgrades in the past and this is just another planned upgrade that everyone is agreeing on and the only one that has been contentious was that dow hard fork back in 2016 where we had that ethereum classic spin out and that had again a small minority of the community go off and create their own coin and do their own thing so this is not the case. This is just the second half of that Metropolis planned upgrade. We covered the first half over a year and ago now by Xantium. Um, man, how time flies. And this is the second half of that Constantinople that has five major changes that are all just efficiency improvements for the Ethereum protocol to make it more competitive with a lot of these other coins that are coming out and claiming big things. So the first Ethereum improvement proposal that's going to be implemented is 145, bitwise shifting. So again, this one just has to do with less gas costs for those smart contracts. We know that we have to pay gas in the form of Ethereum for the computational power on the Ethereum world computer. And this proposal just makes those gas costs up to 10 times uh, cheaper. So a great thing. The next one is 1052. And this one has to do with how smart contracts verify the code when they're communicating with other smart contracts. So previously they'd have to you know, verify all the code in a smart contract, but now we have a hash at the top of that code. And we know that how hashes work, um, if there's any changes, then it creates a new hash. So if the hash is the same, we can you know, be certain that it has been verified and there's no changes. So it really speeds up that process of smart contracts verifying other smart contracts. The next one here is 1014, and this one has to do with all those layer two solutions that we've spoken about in the past. So this is implemented by Vitalik himself, and it allows for um, off-chain transactions. So think about that Raiden, that Ethereum Lightning Network, uh, state channels. Um, with Funfair, we've spoken about things like fate channels. So this is all just improvements for those off-chain transactions to take place and free up the main chain. The next one is 1234, and this is the difficulty bomb or the ice age that we've spoken about before. Ethereum always had on its roadmap to move to proof of stake in the future. Now, like a lot of projects, they're behind on their roadmap, and the difficulty bomb is going to kick in where it just gets too difficult for miners um, through that proof of work algorithm. So they have to delay that happening so that we can t continue using proof of work until they're ready to make that switch to proof of stake in the future. And I've seen a lot of people that are confused because there's a few changes that are paving the way for that to take place in the future, but this hard fork itself is not a move to proof of stake. That's going to happen in the future. Um, there's talk about 32F being the minimum required for you to stake and collect those rewards and so on, but for the time being, that's at least uh, 12 months away. And the final change is 1283, so gas metering. So this one has to do with reducing the gas cost for data storage um, for certain contracts and optimizing memory use on the blockchain. So this is the most technical one. You don't have to understand how this works or any of them really, just knowing that they're all improving those efficiencies as well as the, the big one here is reducing that new supply of Ethereum from 3 down to two. Now, I spoke about this in the past. I'm going to touch on this at the end, and I did a detailed analysis on members about why I think this is so important, reducing that new block reward. So as I touched on at the start, this is going to be supported unanimously by every exchange, wallet provider, you know, your ledger and your trezor. They're probably going to come out and say, guys, we're supporting this changeover. So really, whether you've got your coins on an exchange or your hardware wallet, there's probably not a lot you have to do. You maybe have to download um, some updates for the software. 
Uh, but that's it. Where people get in trouble is these promises of these hard forks and free coins. And we saw it last time in the first half of the Metropolis hard fork last year, where things like Ether Zero popped up, promising that you know they're going to do this and that better than Ethereum and so on. And here we are, 12 months later. You know, we don't even know the market cap or circulating supply. A lot of people might have bought this not knowing what it was, or plugged their private key into some web wallet, and we're seeing the exact same thing again. So this is Ethereum now that's got the ticker symbol ETN, the same as Electronium, which is a bit confusing. But again, they're promising that they're going to be better than Ethereum and whatnot. And this has already been proven uh, to be a scam. And the other one that's popped up is Ethereum Classic Vision. Now, I can't find any information about the team. Again, this one's already raising some red flags for me. Bounties for anyone that promotes this. And again, a web wallet where it's going to ask you to send in your Ethereum or put your private key into something online. And this tends to be what scammers are doing. So I'm being very cautious. I'm not trying to claim any um, free coins or airdrops at this stage, guys. You know, I'm open-minded. If any of these prove to be real in the future, then I might consider it. But for the time being, the risk to reward is simply not there. And the majority of you have nothing to do or worry about whether your coins are on an exchange or in your own custody. As long as you've got that private key, you know, your, your options are your own. The world is your oyster. Don't stress. Now, price-wise, last year, Ethereum was trading at around $300, a touch under, when this was all happening. And again, the supply was reduced from 5 to 3F, and we said that that's going to be a lot of upwards pressure on the price. Now, so many things contributed to that bull run last year, but the one thing we know is that Ethereum tends to lead alt season, and if it's going up, all these other altcoins tend to go up. So we're at this stage now where we're waiting to see if we've bottomed. Ethereum's already up 100% from those lows. There's some pretty good volume coming in. So a lot of people are wondering that, hey, if this new supply is reduced from three to two, maybe that does put upwards pressure on the price. It'd be great if we can kick off another alt season. But the final message, I guess, guys, is all ARC20 tokens, smart contracts, you know, it's up to the, the miners to upgrade and those nodes. There's not a lot for you to do or have to worry about. Don't get scammed out there. And if you want a deeper dive into everything that I see going on, uh, in the Ethereum community, I did a detailed analysis for members. So head to nuggetsnews.com.au if you want to join our crypto community. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed that presentation. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around, and thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers.